Hello, everyone, and welcome to this amazing day where we are going to celebrate the perfect 4th of July barbecue. You are in for a great session today. I have with me my partner, Dr. Deidre Mason, and we've got a special guest for you tonight. Hi, Dee. How are you doing? I am doing wonderful and very excited. Let me tell you why. Because we're going to talk about food again. It's one of my favorite topics. Well, before we get into food, let's talk about the 4th of July. And I just want everybody to remember that on July 4th in 1776, the Continental Congress officially passed the De Declaration of Independence. And that is what the celebration is all about. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, you, you thought you were going to come to this with your own yep. bit of trivia, but I'm telling you what, Mr. Franks, right. I have my own bit of trivia. Decided. Did you know? Oh, yeah. Did you know on July 8th, it was the first public reading of the Declaration of Independence? The first major celebration with fireworks was on July 4th, and that's where this comes from, 1777. <laughs> I'm not sure how safe that was, the fireworks, the explosions that were happening. But I do want you to do the math with me. Dennis, that means the United States of America is 244 years old, coming this July 4th, 2020. So I want us to celebrate big this year. I've got another one for you. Okay. Do you know that the oldest city in the, do you know what the oldest city in the United States is? I'm yeah, going to tell no you. I have no idea. I'm going to tell you, it was occupied 455 years ago, St. Augustine, Florida. It was officially established by the Spanish in 1565. So we're talking about a very diverse history is a part of the United States. It's very exciting to be bringing all of this together. I'm super excited that you asked me to do this with you, Dennis. I'm super excited about our guest tonight. Well, I have to, I have to tell you something. I, I'm not to be outdone. Who, <laughs> I got a question for you now. Who was the first European to land in the Americas? I know I'm supposed to know this. I don't know. <laughs> tell me. Okay. A lot of people would say Christopher Columbus, but it was actually Leif Erikson. That's actually. right. No, I knew it with the hat and everything. I knew we, I knew it. I knew it. But that was 500 years before Christopher Columbus even got there. But it's amazing when you start thinking about all the history that comes with the Americas. Right. Well, I don't know. I don't know if our history today is as illustrious as it was then when we were talking about Leif Erikson. Because I've got a bit of trivia that is um, fun and sad at the same time. Would you be surprised, Dennis, to know that three billion, that's with a B, pizzas are sold in the United States annually. That is over a hundred acres of pizza. And not to be outdone, the barbecue or the backyard frenzy, they're always throwing in the hot dogs. We also happen to be the biggest consumer of hot dogs. We're That's number kind of one. What we're talking about, right? <laughs> well, you know, it's amazing how you tie things back to food. And you're, you're not big at all, but you love food. I love that. <laughs> I'm, I'm big on food. I, I That's personally true. I'm not sharing food. The, the fireworks, the gathering of people, the barbecues, um, maybe one too many of your favorite natural beverages throughout the day, really changing the scope or how it all works for you for the celebration. But when you think of 4th of July, do you have any memorable moments? Oh, I, have, I have a lot of memorable moments. And it's funny, thinking about this, um, for me, I, what I think a lot of people maybe don't know about me is that I'm one of seven and I have a twin. So the family outings were pretty big, right? These were not small vacations and they weren't small picnics. You had to carry your own weight is what I'm talking about. But every year we would actually go up to Mill Creek Canyon in um, Utah where I'm from. We would go up the mountain because we lived at the base of the Wasatch. And every year we would go to Mill Creek Canyon and we would play in the water. We would run around and hike. And we had a huge barbecue with my cousins who were not going to allow my dad to outdo them. And so there were 10 of them. We had a huge family barbecue every year at Mill Creek Canyon. And it was brilliant. Oh, wow. I remember growing up, uh, our family, my father took us over to the 
public park and we'd go early and get one of the shelters with the, the picnic tables and the barbecue. <laughs> and we had the whole family come over all day, every sport you can think of, games, jumping around in the waters and so forth. But you know what? At night, laying on the blanket, looking up and feeling the, those big booms, you know, when you were yeah. little, you got those fireworks working with you. But those surely were the days, I have to tell you. You know, how about sharing a little insight, okay? A little bit about how we might be able to have a healthy 4th of July. Okay. Let, well, let, let, let's bring it to the real, the, the, the good news. is The good news is you can still be healthy on this holiday. You know, you had mentioned, Dennis, that you may have a couple uh, or, or more uh, drinks. And I think it's important for us to recognize that we are going to celebrate and we all have our different ways of celebrating, but staying hydrated is just as important. And so you want to make sure that you've got an alternative drink, whether it's something that you put a little bit of uh, lemonade in, some spritzer water, some seltzer water, you want to stay hydrated. You can still be very social without the alcohol, but you want to make sure that you're spacing that out with good hydration because there's other benefits of staying hydrated during 4th of July holidays or holidays that are food centric. And one of those is that when you're out in the sun, staying hydrated is critically important, but it also does something else. Cause you mentioned we love food. <laughs> staying hydrated also works with the gastric juices in a way that you can feel full and you don't end up over snacking on the wrong foods, right? On too many foods before delicious barbecue or other uh, foods that you and your family love to make. So hydration is going to be my first recommendation for people. The second recommendation, especially if we're going to talk about backyard barbecues, is you've heard about salad dressing on the side, right? Mm -hmm. So I want you to do your barbecue sauce on the side, in particular when you've got cuts of meat that are already grown, cooked, um, they, that they've been... Um, stored in such a way that they are wrapped in their own juices. You want access to that. So sauces on the side are a great way to stay away from excess sugars, um, excess calories that you don't need, but also so that you can truly enjoy the food that you're eating. Um, I think it's really important and why I'm not going to make some friends here tonight when I say this. You know, often when people complain, I'll say to them, stop. This does not need to upset you, right? And so I'm going to change that up a little bit. And I'm going to say, let's get rid of that bread. Stop. This does not need to be a sandwich, right? You can enjoy the meat without the sandwich bread, right? So these are some of the things that I think are important. You're going to stay hydrated. You're going to do sauces on the side so that you can taste the meat, you're gonna get rid of the calories that you don't need that aren't adding a whole lot uh, to this. Let's make sure, make sure our barbecue is messy. So bread is on the side, right? Um, and you're gonna find a way to bring in a new recipe. So I'm going to encourage each and every one of you to find a green recipe. Stop and think about your family barbecues right now. How many times can you look around and think that there was green stuff there, right? So vegetables aren't commonly there, so I want you to think of how can I put some of these great spirited um, sauces, the flavors and things that, that make these sauces together, how can I add those to some greens? Collards, kale, spinach, all of these things. Let's find a new recipe and create a new healthy tradition for our backyard barbecues. Thank you, Dee, so much. And now it's time to introduce our guest and our superhero when you start thinking about it when it comes to great cooking, great beef. Ray Rostelli is the founder of Rostelli Markets. It is a tradition in the greater Philadelphia, New Jersey areas. He is known for the best tailgating in all of Philadelphia and one of the biggest Philadelphia Eagle fans. We love Ray back there and we love him here because now he's a partner with Mark in America an accomplished musician, but even a better cook. Ladies and gentlemen, Ray Rostelli. Dennis, it's great to see you. Dr. D, I'm so glad to be here with you today. And you're talking about all them green things that uh, make us really healthy. I'm going to talk a little bit today about meat. I'm going to share with you um, really some easy barbecue tips, 4th of July. But let me tell you about my favorite, my memory about 4th of July. 
So for me, it's always kind of revolves around food and the barbecue, but it was the night before because the little town I grew up in, we had a bicycle ride every 4th of July. They'd have all the kids decorate their bikes the night before, and we'd spend two hours riding through the town. But what made it special was the night before, I got to spend it with my dad, really just decorating that bike and making me feel really proud about that. So I remember that more than anything about 4th of July. And then, of course, the barbecue. So that's where we're going to start. So I've got a few things to show you. Remember, we've got we've got a package, our ABF steak, burger, and chicken package, which is absolutely incredible for 4th of July. And if you're ordering by the 28th of June, you're going to make sure you get it to you. So I'm going to start with our ground beef. Now, you'll see i got a big piece of meat out here. And this is a chuck, but it's not just any chuck of beef. It's an ABF chuck, which means it's antibiotic, steroid, and hormone-free. Really critical that we put great things in our body. But here's what I want you to know about our ground beef. When this ground beef comes to you, it has gone through a number of tests. Now, I'm not going to get too technical, but here's what I want you to know. That the USDA requires a processor like ourselves, who makes ground beef, to report a test to them once every month. So think about that. They test this for E. coli once every month. That's what the requirement is. Well, our requirement here for our Market America product and for all products that we're selling puts out is we test this every 15 minutes. So Ooh. think about that, right? So important to know where your food's coming from. So, so important to know it's healthy, it's safe for you. So our ground beef being tested every 15 minutes, you can rest easily at night, and I do too. So for 44 years, my name's been on the building. I want to make sure it stays that way. So um, <laughs> start with this. we start with this beautiful piece of chuck. We then grind this piece of chuck into our beautiful ground beef. So I'm going to show you how I make my ground beef burgers. And it's a really simple recipe. First, I take that ground beef and I just kind of mush it up. Not too mushy. Just put it in there. And it's real simple. A little bit of seasoning salt, right? I'm going to put a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder, and, of course, black pepper. It's really that simple. Now, here's what I want you to know when you're mixing your ground beef and to make your burgers is don't overmix it. If you overmix it, what happens is there's a, there's a protein called myosin that comes out of this ground beef and it makes it really sticky and it makes it really tough. So that's about it. That's all I want to be able to do there. And for me, it's real simple. For barbecues, I like making sliders and they're really simple, right? Just take it, roll it in your hand, but don't press hard. And look how beautiful that is, really as simple as that. And when you make these sliders, you know what's great about them? Because they're small and they're simple, you get lots of people who just pick up one or two because there's always so many different things on that grill. So all these recipes are going to live in your back office um, so you can get them. Um, but I thought it was really important for you to know about this antibiotic-free ground beef that is tested every 15 minutes, which is much, much more than... Um, the USDA requires, but it's really the most important thing for us. So all we're going to do is we're going to take them, we're going to drop them in that skillet. Now remember, you want to get your grill really hot or you want to get your skillet really hot. And the reason for it is because we want to be able to sear the outside of those, right? And when we sear the outside, it gives us the ability to keep those, juice, those juices actually inside of that burger. And that's really important. And what happens? Well, when you're, when you're, cooking a burger. Here's the trick. You're going to cook that burger. You're not going to press. Just let that burger cook for about three to four minutes on one side. When it's finished, three to four minutes on the other side. Now, you're not going to pick it up with your hand, but this is the magic of TV, right? So drop it on there, and then you're done. Because when you press on your burger and you let those juices go into the grill, You've taken all those nutrients and all that, those good things that come from that ground beef, and you've actually just pushed them into the bottom of the grill. So simple tip, one side, four minutes, flip it. The other side, four minutes, don't press. You will have the most incredible burger. Simple seasonings, simple, fresh product, ABF burger. So we're going to move on from there because I have another one, and this one really is a fan favorite at my house. Um, and this is really our ground beef dip, right? So our ground beef dip, and think about it, ground beef dip. And Dr. D, you talked about being healthy. Um, yeah. This is a healthier alternative, right? Because we're not going to put this on any buns. 
We're not going to put this on, you know, on anything other than, you know, inside a dip. And you can use some veggies for that, whatever. But it's a little bit more involved, but it's really a winner. So you're going to take the ground beef, and you're going to, I hear if I've already sauteed the ground beef, I've got my onions and I've got my garlic inside of there. So once I've got that sauteing, and that's basically finished in, in just maybe three or four minutes, I'm then going to begin to add all of my other ingredients. So I've got some chilies, right? I'm going to definitely add some chilies in there. I've got some salt. I've got some tomato paste. All good things, right? I've got some pinto beans. Mm, looks delicious. We got a little bit of chip, yeah. It, and where do you see it? And sure, you can't put that on a chip or two. If, if, you, if you were to <laughs> taste it, then she'd really be excited. A little bit of chili powder, right? Some cumin, some paprika, some garlic powder. Now, as this is sauteing, you're basically just mixing and folding. So all we're going to be doing is we're going to be folding all of these ingredients together. And once we fold these together, that's going to cook for about another three minutes or so. But look at, actually, Dr. D is green in here. Look at that. That's what I'm looking that, for. I think we just found for. our new recipe. We got to find ways to be creative. Yeah. To yeah. put greens in the dip or eat the dip with some greens. This is great. Yep. Then after you've got that folded in, it's taken about three or four minutes, we're going to take some Greek yogurt because the yogurt really helps to give you that dip consistency. We're just going to pour that dip right in there. Now, while I've been doing this, guys, I've had my oven heating at 400 degrees because we're going to be finishing this in the oven. So now I'm just folding my, my Greek yogurt into that. And you can see it's beginning to look dippish, right? Very dip-like, right? Um, we're going to take a little bit of cheese here. Now, you can substitute something a little healthier if you don't want cheese. but uh, And only about half the cheese that is recommended is what you're going to put here. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to really fold that cheese into this dip. And now it's really being beginning to take hold. And, and all while I'm sauteing over really a, just a very light heat. Because we're going to finish this in the oven. Once we have got this really mixed well, just kind of separate it all. And, and, and you want to make sure you can put it in a pan like this that can go into the oven. And all I'm going to do is finish on top with cheese because I really want it to come out of there bubbling hot and really, 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 really incredibly looking because most people eat with their eyes first, right? So all we do at that point is take that in our oven. It's at 450 degrees. Once we're finished, and it doesn't take very long in there, because remember, it's all been cooked. We're just melting that aside. You've got a dip that you can now utilize, whether it is for veggies, whether it's for chips, uh, whether it's for, you know, uh, a bread that you'd like to put it on. But all of a sudden, it makes things really, really easy. So there are two easy ways to use it. The ground beef that comes in this package. You can almost make a lettuce roll with that too. You, you certainly I think can. you could. You can get really, really creative with this because, and again, you know, ground beef is by far uh, the most utilized product. And when you think about a ground beef product, you want to make sure you're using the best. And I say this to people all the time, you know, when you were a kid, and I know when I was a kid, and my mom would take me into the butcher shop, I never bought some ground beef out of the case. My mother would say, Take that roast and grind that for me because she knew what it was. Well, that's what's really important for you to know that we're taking these fresh, antibiotic free, steroid free chucks. We're grinding them fresh. They've never been frozen. And then we're making that beautiful one pound brick for you that comes to you frozen and ready to use. So we're going to move right on down to our chicken now. Remember, there's chicken in this package too. So I'm going to show you a really, really simple, simple recipe because it's nice. It's clean. So all I'm going to do is take a really small bowl, and I'm going to drop in that small bowl some lemon zest that I've already done. Um, I'm going to actually take a little bit of <clears throat> lemon juice. Now, when you take your lemon juice, little tip on getting your lemon to really juice well for you, just take it and roll it. So if you take that lemon and you just roll it like that, you're really softening up the inside. And we're just going to take half of that lemon. So when we take half that lemon, it's really kind of soft in there. Always want to squeeze, and you want to squeeze through your fingers, right? You want to squeeze through your fingers like that. The reason being, I want to catch all the seeds in my hand instead of letting them go into uh, actually our pot for mixing. So I'm catching all the seeds, all the um, seeds, and we've got some beautiful lemon along with our lemon zest right inside there. Then I'm adding in my garlic, of course, my salt and pepper, a little bit of parsley. And we're going to finish it with olive oil. 
So all really good, healthy ingredients, and looks really nice too, right? Nice match one. Look at look at how nice that is, right? So what we've got is something green again, Dr. D, right? <laughs> something really healthy, some olive oil, and all I'm going to do is take my chicken, and I'm just going to mix that chicken around in there. Look at that. It's really as simple as that now. I like getting my hands dirty, so I'm going to really just mix it in. And, you know, if you'd like to leave it sit in there for a few minutes, that's fine because that lemon juice is actually going to uh, help to give you some flavor and breakdown. But all of these ingredients are clean, they're really healthy, and they're all, again, on your back office. So you can actually learn how to do this. So this is really simple. I'm going to take these pieces of chicken, and again, just in my hot skillet or on my grill, and literally... Three minutes on one side, three minutes on the other side, and I've got some chicken that is absolutely perfect, right? You're going to get chicken that looks like this. Again, antibiotic-free, steroid-free, hormone-free chicken. Now, it's really important when I say those words because most chicken is not, and it's completely different. When you take a chicken product that is not antibiotic-free, you really don't know what's in it. You don't know where it came from. These chicken breasts came from the Shenandoah Valley. They come from small family farmers that I have been dealing with for the past 40 years. So you see, I trust where the product comes from, and you actually can trust now your butcher who's taking care of it. So that quickly, and it literally takes minutes, we've made just that beautiful chicken dish that is simple and healthy. So moving right along, and again, remember, that package comes right to you, frozen, just like this. And look at how beautiful that is, no fat. No skin, nothing completely boneless on that chicken breast. And finally, I'm going to get to our sirloin steak. You know, uh, again, an antibiotic-free, steroid-free sirloin steak. And all I'm going to do is really take that steak and I'm going to grill it, right? And we all know how easy it is to grill a steak. And, you know, I don't, I, I will put some seasoning at times on the outside of my steak. And it's really just a little bit of salt and pepper because I don't want the seasoning to overpower the steak. But what I love to do is to make a sauce to put over the steak. So we're going to make a little chimichurri sauce. And we start with some garlic, garlic, I'm sorry, some parsley in our food processor. We're going to add a little bit of garlic. And we're going to add- I'm learning that right uh, barbecues at the Rostelli house include garlic. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's a steak. That's you Italian. Know. <laughs> you can imagine, right? Um, real simple. Like using the food processor, just pulse that a little bit, right? And it doesn't take much to really start to get that mixed around. A little bit of salt and pepper. A little bit of crushed red flake. Again, I'm going to give it a little bit, a few more pulses at that point. And then, of course, you know, one of the other things that's really steady at my house is some beautiful olive oil, right? So we're going to put that inside there, and we're going to put a little bit of vinegar in there as well, right? So all simple, clean ingredients. I'm going to pulse that. Just let that run, and you're going to get the most incredible chimichurri sauce that is simple to do. You don't want to get it too Thin. You want to keep it nice and thick so that it actually sits over that steak. So when that steak comes off the grill, like this one has already, and you can see how beautiful these sirloin steaks are right off the grill, all you've got to do is take your chimichurri sauce and just go right on top. And what you've done is basically you have not changed the flavor profile of the steak, but you've added just a beautiful sauce right on top that most people are going to realize or think that they're at a five-star restaurant and you've yeah. taken some really simple, great, healthy ingredients and made something really, really special. It is that simple. If I can do it, you can do it. And the reason I say that is because remember, I'm a butcher, I am not a chef. And that's simply, and I shouldn't say simply because I've had a lot of help here today uh, from the folks around here getting all of our mise en place set up, but take a look at this spread. Take a look at what this is all about. So when we start with our beautiful ABF chicken, we've got our ABF steak with our chimichurri sauce, and we've got our burger dip, which I think you're going to absolutely love. And then, of course, our burgers or our sliders that we made out of that ABF product. So this is all ABF product. This is that product that comes right to Market America. Uh, it is made specifically for you um, because it's ABF. It's a healthier product if you order by the 28th of June, remember that gets to you just in time for the 4th of July. And you can do some of the things that I did here. It's really simple to do. 
Ray, that is absolutely you. brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jeed, tell me what were some of the highlights that you just saw there? I mean, what were your okay. big takeaways? Out of the gate, I don't know who's going behind the scenes and telling Ray my favorite foods, but chimchurri sauce is one of my favorites. And he just like pulled the curtain aside and showed me how easy it would be for me to make it myself. So I'm over the moon right now because I just saw how to make it. And um, the other thing that I didn't know, and I'm so excited about this is not pressing the, the meat. I happen to be a big fan of, of ground beef. I, I love steak, I love beef, but I've always made this mistake, obviously. I've always pressed down on my meat too much and I cannot wait to try it differently this time because, I mean, Roselli's meat is amazing anyway. Um, I, I'm, I'm blown away by the taste and the quality and just the robust flavor. But now I'm, I'm even more excited because I'm gonna capture a lot of that, clearly those nutrients and the fat that I've been like just squeezing off. So that for me, that's a, that's a huge win. Like worth the, the price of admission right there. Yeah, I'm in I, love, this is I great. I think you really noticed the difference too, Dr. D. You know, when you, when you sear the outside, that's why it's so important for that grill to be hot, for your skillet to be hot. You sear that outside, you keep those juices in. So just don't press. I know it's, you want to do something with that spatula. I know we all do, <laughs> right? But believe me, uh, we want you to bite into it, taste all that flavor and those nutrients, you know? And, and I always say, you know, the, you know what the Philly lean is, right? The Philly lean is when you've got that burger in your hand, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nose, <laughs> you know that, I know that, 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 both of your arms, that's a great burger when you do that. <laughs> that's you know, brilliant. I love it. I really love the fact that you talked about the cook times, you know, especially for the chicken. So many people kill chicken. I mean, I mean, just burn it up dry. And what you had mentioned there is so, so true. The, the three minutes on each side, yeah, beautiful, beautiful, moist chicken. I love that. And the slider size. Normally I have bigger burgers, but they're always too much. You can't get to eat everything on the table. So yeah. the, the slider side was awesome. And don't crazy mix the ground meat. That was the other one. Yeah, yep. that's right. Don't don't over mix that. Exactly. I'm totally, I'm totally guilty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you when you over mix, you basically you're making that more tough, right? You, you're you're that myosin comes out. It's it's a sticky. And it sticks that meat together. We don't really want to do that. And, you know, my favorite of all these things, and I've been making certainly the steaks and the chicken for the longest time, but the dip is the newest thing for me. And I have to tell you, I love it because I am trying to stay away from some of the carbs. So I'm not doing that great a job. Back to day. But for the dip, for me, it's great with vegetables. You know, and I'm still getting some great proteins out of that burger. Well, and I like how you showed us that while you were using a Greek yogurt, it doesn't have to be... Um, uh, a, a different type of dairy yogurt or a problematic dairy yogurt. And today, there are so many different options that you can choose, including some of the nut, um, pureed nut options. I, I can think of so many different ways I could do a variation on that theme for people with food issues or concerns about dairy. So, um, it, I mean, it, it just showed how easy it would be to, to um, substitute ingredients in there. So that's an exciting one for people to learn. And you know, remember, food should be fun, right? <laughs> Make, keep it as simple as possible. Keep it the ingredients as clean as possible. Your guests will enjoy it. You'll love it because you'll have lots more time. And it should be fun. It should be easy. So don't be afraid to experiment. Perfect. I yeah. love it. Yeah, totally. It is. And listen, everybody, that's Ristelli's. Look it up on shop.com. They've got special 4th of July barbecue packs. You don't want to miss it and earn that cash back. That's a great thing too at the same time. I, I, I completely agree. This is so, there are so many different options for us on shop.com, earning cash back. Um, it's, it's a really exciting time to start thinking about how to add new traditions, how to add um, some more flavor and fun. As Ray says, cooking should be fun. And um, uh, this holiday should be fun. And I've got a ton of different ways that I, both Dennis and I have got ways that we would do this. Uh -huh. So what are some of the things that we can do to help bring the food even to a higher level of excitement? There are some partner stores that we have on shop.com that will complement the Rostelli barbecue feast. You know, one for sure that I like is something called Recreation Deals. And they've got all kinds of wonderful assortments of decorations. 
And, you know, they even have things that you wouldn't think you would have to spice up your backyard, like special patriotic umbrellas and things that would really be great favors for your guests that come over. And you know what I have to tell you, and for those of you that eat too much, we have a partner store called Cub Cadet, where you can get a little tractor to take you away <laughs> after the long day on the 4th of July. <laughs> Dean, do you have any recommendations? <laughs> Mine are going to be a little less colorful. <laughs> You might need a small backhoe to get you out of there. Um, join Club Cadet. That's great. That's awesome. No, I mean, my big ones are uh, the ones I use all year long, Bed Bath & Beyond. I mean, when you go on Bed Bath & Beyond on shop.com, you see everything from the linens and the bedding that you're going to need for, you know, if family come to visit, right, to now let's think about um, cleaning up the patio and dressing up the patio. So patio furniture, there's all kinds of different options there. And we're talking about barbecue right now. We're talking about getting out and cleaning up that grill, which is what I thought was so funny about your story is I think everybody on watching today knows that grill you're talking about where you would run early in the morning to get to get one of those shelters and that grill was so dirty that you didn't care because you got the shelter <laughs> right yeah. so, I, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, another great uh store right now is uh, called barbecues galore and it's aptly named because it is uh, a large retailer of grills and grilling tools the things that you need uh and and just like Bed Bath & Beyond, you've got an option to have these uh, shipped to you uh, so that you can create um, the, the backyard oasis that you're looking for. So these are all available on shop.com. You know, there are many things, if you get comfortable and searching through the different stores, even a store like Christmas Central, it's a one-cart <laughs> store. It has more than just Christmas decorations. So check them out. I mean, again, all of these things complement what the Rostelli family brings. Mark and America is so proud, Ray, to have you as Mark and America's butcher. And we hope we have you for many years to come. Oh, and Dennis, we could not be more proud to be associated with Mark and America. And, and yourself, certainly, and Dr. D, and you guys have been just part of the family. And uh, we uh, absolutely love being part of your family. Well, thanks. I know that I'm off to order at least two of these packages, these specials, because they serve 21 servings in each. Yes. And I'm going to have all of my grandchildren and family here. So we'll That's do that. And it's funny because I already purchased um, this exact pack for um, my mother and my father who live in Texas. I did that because I know I won't be spending the 4th of July with them, but we're supposed to be visiting. So I, this, because this all, I'm not going to let that get in the way. We've got all kinds of ways to connect virtually, just like I'm connecting with y'all right now. So I'm sending, um, I've already sent them a package and we're going to, we're going to Ristelli's on July 4th together. <laughs> Dr. D, that's a great, you know, that's a great idea. Not, not just because it's coming from your heart and you want to, you want to treat your family that way, but it's a great way to introduce people to a new product like this, right? Because when people have never had an antibiotic free steroid free hormone free product like this, well, they just don't know what they're missing. So you, you, you're really done your family a service by doing that. That's, uh, I commend you on that. That's wonderful. Now, Ray, I just want you to know, should you ever move south, even a girl from Utah will get you all in every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see, any final comments, team, before we close out? You guys, this was so much fun. I hope everyone enjoys their holiday, the, the rest of uh, their, their weekend. Um, and really just think about the things that you can do to be good to yourself. And remember, um, you know, body, mind, and spirit. Like Ray says, food should be fun. You should enjoy yourself. Um, be good to yourself. Speak kind to other people. Speak kind to yourself. I think it's important that we do that. Okay. Ray? Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful Father's Day, all you fathers out there, and 4th of July is right around the corner. You bet. So happy 4th of July to everyone. We look forward to seeing you throughout shop.com. From the Market America family to yours, have a blessed and wonderful celebration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you.